I don't want to pack Thanksgiving away yet. You know, it seems like our society and our world, we go right from Halloween to Christmas. Did you notice that? We kind of skip over, I think, which is one of the most special holidays of the year, and that's Thanksgiving, which we've just had this past Thursday. And I believe the simplicity of Thanksgiving and the spiritual significance of Thanksgiving is what makes it special. And I also think that's what people buck against and why it's not as important because there's such powerful spiritual. It's simple. You don't have to buy anything for anyone. You just gather together and you just be thankful. And we take time to reflect on what's really important in life. And so I don't want to pack Thanksgiving away. And so this morning, I'm going to share with you from Psalm 100. If you'll open your Bibles with me to Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5, the entire little psalm, familiar but powerful passage. Psalm 100, it says this, verse 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4 is the key verse. Enter. Everybody say enter. Enter his gates. Say gates. With thanksgiving. Say thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Now anybody who's been around Bethel for any period of time has heard me probably say that verse 4, this key verse, I always call it God's password. And that's the title I'm going to leave with you this morning. I've used that title or reference before, but I've never preached a full message from this 100th Psalm with that in mind. But I want you to see that God gives us in his word his password to access his account and to experience him in a greater dimension in our life. Verse 4 tells us this. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter, that word enter there means to gain access. And the Bible tells us that we enter his gates. Gates represents opening up of God's heart and heaven's door. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And I submit to you this morning that thanksgiving is God's password to access his account and to experience him in a greater way. We've all seen a login screen. I've used this, again, this illustration before. But I want you to see that as we, we do this with all of the time, as we have to enter in and log into different accounts, we have to put in our username and then our password. How many know God hasn't changed his password? It's still the same. And it's simple, thanksgiving. How do we enter? How do we access God? How do we experience God in our life? It starts... With thanksgiving. And that's why this morning I don't want to pack away this very special holiday because I don't want us to just focus on thanksgiving during the holiday. I want us to focus on it each day as a spiritual principle for our life. Here's, here's today's big idea. Thanksgiving is one of the spiritual keys to access and experience God in our life. If we want to tap into God. We want to connect with God. We want to experience God in a real and personal way in our life. It starts with thanksgiving. You enter. When you came into this building to get access to this service today, you came through that first door, the outer door. That entrance is the start to gaining access, and thanksgiving is that first doorway. It's one of God's spiritual keys and principles to entering and to accessing and experience him in our lives. Now, I'm going to be honest with you this morning. There are a lot of things right now in our world and in life that are upsetting. 
How many know there's a lot to be upset about today? There's a lot to be frustrated about. Come on, let's be honest. There's a lot to even be angry about. But you know what? There's also a lot to be thankful for. Come on. You know, I, I'm going to tell on myself. The other day, a couple of days before Thanksgiving, I went to the store to pick up some items that my wife had given me a list for for the Thanksgiving meal. And I got to be honest with you, after I saw the sticker price, I complained the whole way to my car. <laughs> Under my breath. And I was, I was a little bit upset. And then, in my heart, this thought came. Be thankful you have the money to pay for it. Listen, we have a lot, there's a lot in life that can upset us. There's a lot in life that we get frustrated. There's a lot that we can get angry about. And, and maybe this morning you're frustrated, you're upset. Maybe you, there's a lot going on in your world and, and there's just a lot going on. But how many know if we will exchange that frustration and exchange that anger and exchange being upset for being thankful, how many know it will not only change our life, will experience God. Because thanksgiving is the entranceway, the access, the doorway, the first way in which we can experience God in our life. Now this morning I want to give you from Psalm 100 five principles, and I'll do it fast. And I can tell you I can do it because in the first service it was a miracle. I was able to do it so quickly and, and do it. I'm not going to spend a long time on each point, but I want to give you five reasons why, why we should develop a lifestyle, not just during Thanksgiving season, but a lifestyle every day of thanksgiving and worship. How many know thanksgiving is really the first start and the first key in moving into worship and learning to develop a lifestyle of worship? Thanksgiving is that entrance point and that beginning point. And God wants us to have a lifestyle of thanksgiving and worship. I want to give you five reasons why we should do that. Number one, thanksgiving gives us access or opens the door to God's presence. Say God's presence. It says, enter his gates. Now, gates in the Bible represents a doorway into the temple, as I mentioned, into the presence of God. And when we develop a thankful heart, how many know that opens God's heart? And it opens heaven's door to us. Sometimes we feel like heaven is brass and we're not getting... Start with thanksgiving. It opens and gives us access to God's presence. Second Chronicles 31.2 says, Hezekiah appointed the priests and the Levites to serve in the house of the Lord, to offer sacrifices, and to give thanks to God in the gates of the tent or the tabernacle, the presence of God. Second Chronicles 5, 11 and 14 says, And it came to pass that when the priests and the Levites stood at the altar singing, sounding the instruments, and giving thanks to the Lord with one voice that the glory of the Lord filled the house that the priest could not stand in the presence of God. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 12 and 15 says, Jesus, in order to sanctify his people with his blood, suffered outside the gate, the city of Jerusalem or Golgotha. By him we have access to God's presence as we offer sacrifices of praise to God continually, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to God. Thanksgiving is... It gives us access and opens the door to the presence of God. When the people of God gave thanks and offered sacrifices of thanksgiving, and sometimes it's a sacrifice. Sometimes we have to grin and bear it and say, Lord, I don't feel like it, but I give you thanks. But when we do that, we access and it opens the door to God's presence. The more thankful we are, the more of God's presence we will experience in our life. Secondly, Thanksgiving gives us access not only to God's presence, his gates, but Thanksgiving gives us access to God's provision, his courts. 
his courts. You see, the courts, the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now, the courts of the Lord spoke of two different things. One was the outer area in the temple. Once they entered through the gate and they entered into the tabernacle of the temple, there was an open courtyard. It was an open where the laver was and there was different uh, places for them to stop and wash their hands and enter into the presence of God. That outer court of the temple. But the courts also speaks of the marketplace. In those days, they had a marketplace. It was called the courts where all the vendors would sell and exchange their goods and services. And so what he's saying is is that when we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we come into his courts with praise. We are coming into the area where we enter into the courtyard of God. We're entering into the place where God's goods and services are available to us. And so when we are thankful and when we praise God and we develop a lifestyle of worship, we have access to God's provisions, his goods and services in his courts. Psalm 92, 13 and 14 says, Those that are planted or committed worshipers in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They will bring forth fruit even in their old age. They will be fat, a good kind of fat, fully provided for and flourishing or prosper. John chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Maybe we know the story, or if we've never heard the story, of the feeding of the 5,000. There were so many people, and they had not enough food. They had no food, as a matter of fact. And Jesus said, let's feed the people. And the disciples came to him and said, Lord, all we have is a little boy with five loaves and two fishes. But how much is that, considering how big the multitude is? And the Bible says that Jesus instructed them to have the people sit down. And then he took the five loaves and fishes, and you know what he did? He gave thanks for them. How many know when we're thankful for a little, oh, come on, it can feed a multitude. When we're thankful for little, God will bless us with much. When he thanked God for the five loaves and fishes, then he distributed them. And you want to know what? 5,000 men, not counting women and children, were fed. And the Bible says there were 12 baskets left over. Jesus taught us that we should be thankful even for the little, and he'll bless it with more. Thanksgiving gives us access, opens the door to God's provision. The more thankful we are, the more God's provision we experience in our life. Thirdly, the third reason why we should develop a lifestyle of thanksgiving and worship is that thanksgiving not only gives us access to God's presence, say presence, his gates, say gates, Not only does thanksgiving give us access to God's provision, say provision, say his courts, but thirdly, thanksgiving gives us access or opens the door to God's power, say power. Notice in verse 4, his name, be thankful and bless his name. How many know name speaks of authority, speaks of power? When you sign your name to a check or you sign a document, that's authority and you have the power and the authority to access your resources just by that signature and by that name. And the Bible is telling us that when we call on the name of God and we learn to thank God for his name and call on his name, we access God's resources and power in our life when we bless his name. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. You see, when we bless his name, notice this, the name is the key, the name is the power. He says, then he goes on to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The benefits come by calling on his name. And it says, Who forgives, say forgives who forgives all of our sin, who heals, say heals, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems, say redeems, our life from destruction, who crowns, say crowns, crowns our life with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies, say satisfies, 
satisfies our mouth with good things. You see, thanksgiving gives us access and opens the door to God's power to forgive our sins, to heal our diseases, to redeem our life from destruction, to crown our life with loving kindness and good, and to satisfy our life. There's power in the name, and when we bless that name, we access God's power in our life. Luke 17 In verses 17 to 19, there's a story of 10 lepers who come to Jesus to be healed. And Jesus tells them to go in faith and show themselves to the priest. The Bible says as they went, they were all healed, all 10 of them. However, one of them, recognizing he was healed, stops and turns back and comes to Jesus to give glory to God. And he says, Jesus, thank you for healing me. Jesus said, were there not ten, where are the other nine? And then Jesus turns to the one who was thankful and said, go in faith, your faith has made you whole. I want you to notice, nine were healed, one was made whole. You see, God healed them, but the one that get thankful, he made access to power of God in every area of his life. Not just healing physically, but God touched him in every area of his life. He was made whole. And when we call on the name of the Lord and we have a thankful heart with that, we have access to God's power in our life. The more thankful we are, the more God's power we experience in our life. Number four, thanksgiving not only gives us access to God's power, presence, his gates. Thanksgiving not only gives us access to God's provision, his courts. Thanksgiving not only gives us access to God's power, his name, but the Bible tells us in Psalm 100 that Thanksgiving gives us access or opens the door to God's pardon. Verse 5 talks about his mercy. It says his mercy is everlasting or it endures forever. How many know mercy speaks of God's undeserved kindness, and favor. Aren't you glad God gives us undeserved kindness and mercy? Listen, sometimes we think, well, I deserve that. Well, you know what? God does it even when we don't deserve it because that's his mercy and his grace. And the more thankful we are, how many know the more mercy and favor and kindness we will experience in our life? How many parents within the sound of my voice? How many parents? Come on, let me see your hand. You know as well as I do that when a child is thankful, you want to give them more mercy and more blessing. When they're not thankful, come on. When they're not thankful, you don't even want to give them anything more because they're not thankful for what they have. Come on, tell me. The same thing is true with God's undeserved. God wants to endow us with it. Listen, God will be faithful and will give us mercies and blessings even when we don't deserve them. But how many know the extra blessings and the extra mercies and the, and the undeserved stuff is, come on, is when we're thankful. When we show that same kind of thanksgiving in our life. Psalm 107, 1 and 22 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let them give sacrifice is of thanksgiving with rejoicing. Psalm 136, 1 to 3, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his mercy endures forever. Psalm 86 in verse 5 says, The Lord is ready to forgive, plenteous in mercy to all who call on him. How many know the Lord is plenteous in giving his mercy? He wants, even when we mess up, His mercy is is granted to us. His pardon comes to us. His unmerited favor comes to us. Isaiah 55 and verse 7, Let the sinner forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, for his mercy will be upon them. Our God will abundantly pardon. How many know there's nothing we can do that God won't forgive today? You say, but pastor, you don't know how much I've messed up. You know what? His mercy endures, and he abundantly pardons if we'll call on him and if we'll have a thankful heart. If we'll say, Lord, thank you that you gave your life for my sin, and thank you that your mercy continues to forgive and continues to cleanse us from all sin. How many know the more thankful we are, the more mercy and favor we experience 
in our life. Fifth and last, Thanksgiving not only gives us access and opens the door to God's presence, his gates, God's provision, his courts, God's power, his name, God's pardon, his mercy, but Thanksgiving also gives us access and opens the door to God's purpose, his truth. Verse 5 says, his truth will endure for all generations. Truth speaks of the wisdom and plan of God for our life. And when we develop a lifestyle of worship and we learn to thank God and seek God's will, how many know he will give us his purpose? He will reveal to us his truth. He will guide us and lead us into the purposes and the ways and the plans of God for our life. Thanksgiving gives us access to his purpose. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your reasonable or true worship to God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when we offer ourselves to God a living sacrifice, when we are thankful and we worship God with our true worship to God, it says then you'll be able to discern what is God's good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. You want God's will, you want God's plan, you want God's direction in your life, you want his truth to be revealed, to lead you and guide you every day and in the paths of your life and his purposes, Learn to be thankful and to worship him. A thankful heart gives us access to God's purpose and will for our life. Ephesians 5, 17 to 20 says, Be not unwise, but understand what God's will is. How do we understand what God's will is? Be filled with the Spirit by speaking to yourself with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart, giving thanks to the Lord always for all things. When we sing and make melody in our heart, when we are thankful to God, we understand his will and we're wise in, our plan, in his plans in our life. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything... Give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. When we, how do we find out what God's will is concerning our life? By being thankful in everything. The more thankful we are, the more of God's purpose we have in our life. Five reasons from Psalm 100 why we should develop a lifestyle of thanksgiving and worship to God. Because thanksgiving gives us access. It's God's password that gives us access and opens the door to God's presence, God's provision, God's power, God's pardon, and God's purposes in our life. His gates, his courts, his mercy, his truth, and his, come on, help me. Who's, who's got it with me? Come on. There you go. Come on. What is it? His gates, his courts, his name his mercy, and his truth. Thanksgiving gives us access to experience God in our life. I don't know about you, but I want to experience God today. I didn't want to just come to church. I don't want to just have another service. I don't want to just, I want to experience God. I want to know God in a powerful and personal way in my own life. How do we do that? It starts by developing a lifestyle. Not just because it's Thanksgiving season, but start today and each day, learn to be thankful. Let me ask a simple question in closing. How thankful are we? Now, really, honestly, how thankful are we? You know, we do a lot of complaining. I do. We get upset. I do. We get frustrated. I do. But how much... And how many times during a day are we thankful? On a scale of one to ten, oh boy. How thankful are we, really? How many could admit we could all use to be a little more thankful? And exchange our frustration for thanksgiving. Exchange our anger, oh, come on. I, and I told you, there's a lot to be upset and frustrated about. Life throws us a lot of junk. 
But how many know if we'll exchange that for thanksgiving, it will not only feel better, but we'll experience God. You know, there's a, an account in the Bible, while we're in the first service at the end, the Lord kind of dropped this in my heart as well, was that there's a story of the people of God. They were in living in captivity in Babylon. And they make this statement, how can we sing we're in a strange land? And they hung their harps on a tree and said, we've lost our praise, we've lost our thanks, we've lost our word. You know what, I think the church has gotten a little bit like that today. I think we've lost a little of our praise. We've lost a little bit of our thankful hearts. We've lost a little bit of our worship. We just don't, we, we've, we just feel like, Lord, how can we sing? You see all the stuff that's going on. We're living in a strange world, a strange time, a strange, things are just not, everything is backwards, everything's wrong. It, Lord, you, how many know God knows that? And how many know he's in control? What do we need to do? We need to be thankful. Come on, let's, not, let's get our harps off the tree. How about that? Will you join me this morning? Stand with me a moment. Would you join me and would you take your harp off the tree, bow your head, lift a hand toward heaven as an act of worship, as an act of thanksgiving, as an act of praise to God? And with you, listen, with your head lifted toward heaven and your hands lifted toward heaven, your eyes closed, just you and God, would you take a moment and I want you to think in the next 30 seconds I want you to think about the people the blessings of God in our life the things that are really most important come on and I want you to just begin to think about those things and I want you to begin to thank God for those things you know what we should just thank God we woke up this morning Lord, thank you that we have breath in our lungs today. Thank you, Lord, that we had a roof over our head today. Thank you that we had heat to keep us warm at night. Thank you that we had food to eat this morning. Thank you that we had a vehicle to get us to church. Thank you that we could afford the gas to get in the vehicle to get to church. Thank you that we can walk and our legs will hold us up. Thank you that we can talk and we can... Thank you for our husband, our wife. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our grandchildren. Thank you for everything. Come on, take a moment right where you're standing. Take your harp off a tree and just set aside your anger and your frustration and, and that you're upset with this and you're mad at this person and, and this thing is getting, I got you upset and just develop a thankful heart and start today to do that every day. Every day, start the morning, take a few minutes every morning. Think about what's most important and give thanks to God. I'll tell you what, it'll start the day and it will open up God's presence God's provision, God's power, God's pardon, God's purpose in our life. We will have access to all that God wants for us. Come on, lift your hands with me and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. Thank you that you forgave.